in estimating the definite integral of cosine four x from negative one to four using Simpson's rule with n equals ten, we can estimate the error involved in the approximation using the error bounds formula given here below. So when using Simpson's rule, the error will be less than or equal to the quantity b minus a to the fifth power, where a and b are the limits of integration, divided by 180 and to the fourth times the absolute value of the maximum of the fourth derivative function on the closed interval from a to b. To find this maximum function value on the closed interval, we'll have the option of either analyzing the fourth derivative function graphically or finding the critical numbers on this closed interval and then evaluating the function at the critical numbers as well as the endpoints because we have a closed interval. So let's begin to set this up. We'll have the error that is less than or equal to, again we have the quantity b minus a to the fifth where a is negative one and b is four. So we would have the quantity four minus negative one raised to the fifth divided by 180 n to the fourth, where n is given as 10. So we're going to multiply this by the absolute value of the maximum function value of the fourth derivative on this closed interval. Where our closed interval will be from negative one to positive four. So now let's work on finding this maximum function value, and then we'll come back and complete this calculation. So starting with the integrand function, we would have f of x equals cosine four x, and now we'll work on finding our fourth derivative function. So the first derivative requires the chain rule. So the derivative of cosine four x would be negative sine four x times four, or negative four sine four x. Now we'll find the second derivative which would be negative four times the derivative of sine four x, which would be negative four cosine four x times four, or negative sixteen cosine four x. And now we can find the third derivative, which would be negative sixteen times the derivative of cosine four x, which would be negative sixteen times negative sine four x times four, or sixty-four sine four x. And now finally we can find the fourth derivative function, which would be sixty-four times the derivative of sine four x, which would be sixty-four cosine four x times four, or two hundred fifty-six cosine four x. And again, our goal is to find the maximum function value of the fourth derivative function on the closed interval from negative one to four. So to do this using calculus techniques, we would have to find the derivative of this function here, which would be the fifth derivative, set it equal to zero and solve for x to find the critical numbers on this interval, and then evaluate the fourth derivative function at the critical numbers and the endpoints to determine the maximum function value. But we should be able to recognize that the graph of our fourth derivative function would have an amplitude of 256 which means the maximum function value would be 256. So let's go ahead and verify this graphically. Here's the graph of the function on the closed interval from negative one to four, and notice how the maximum function value, which would be right here, which is 256, actually occurs three times over this interval, here, here, and here. Also notice if we evaluate this function at the endpoints, f of negative one would be here, and the absolute value of this would still be less than 256, and f of four would be here, and notice how the absolute value of this would still be less than 256, because we know that the minimum function value here would be negative 256. So in this case, one reason why it's easier to analyze the graph is because on this closed interval, there would actually be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different critical numbers because that's where the max and min values occur. So now that we know the maximum function value on this closed interval, we can finish our error calculation. 
we'll simply substitute 256 for this value here. So we'll have the error as less than or equal to, this is going to be five to the fifth divided by 180 times, this is going to be 10,000, and then we have times 256. If we want, we can put this over one. This is going to be equal to 800,000 divided by 1,800,000, ,800, which does simplify nicely to four-ninths. So when estimating this definite integral using Simpson's rule with n equals 10, the error will be less than or equal to four-ninths. I hope you found this explanation helpful.